Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Come on out, everyone. I won't wait that long! One in four people will suffer a mental health problem this year. I used to have a deep dislike of the concept of normality. Last year, over 53,000 people were detained under the Mental Health Act. Is there only going to be front of the shoot train? Cuts to mental health services have been higher than other acute NHS services. 3,000 beds within the last five to six years have been cut. We've got five males with three females requiring admission this afternoon. I've got no beds whatsoever. Are we just, you know, a sort of depository for people that no one else wants to deal with? We followed staff and patients in one of the UK's largest NHS mental health trusts. You're not entitled to treatment in this country. The end of homicide of and he's holding a knife. Things are absolutely dying at the moment. Barnet, Enfield and Haringey Mental Health NHS Trust in North London serves nearly a million people. Staff are preparing the 136 suite, the holding cell for people who've been sectioned under the Mental Health Act. The can castle come off one inside because been unpredictable today. You've been a bit aggressive. We've got to find the door is over there. We'll make you go have a mental health assessment. We're all going to bring you medication. Section 136 of the Mental Health Act allows officers to detain people who are a danger to themselves or the public and take them into protective custody. So cooperate with staff, start making good decisions, and this process will go really quickly, you understand? The number of people detained in this way is now the highest ever recorded. All over the country we're seeing a real surge in the need for mental health services and I think that's probably down to uh, economic austerity, reduction in some of the social services uh, because there have been swinging cuts to local authorities and there have been um, increasing numbers in our population. The Trust has lost over a third of its beds in the last eight years and is running at over 100% capacity. For every patient sectioned, a bed must be found, regardless of how full the hospital is. All right, shall we make a start for um, Barnet? Heather runs the twice daily bed management conference with all eight wards in the trust on the line. The purpose is to free up beds. Patients still very suicidal, so he's not moving on. One female bed. Oh, three, three, there's nothing. None on Trent. None on Avon. No, there, there's no beds. If there are no beds available in the trust, each ward manager must nominate their least unwell patient for potential discharge. OK, can I just clarify that you identified the least unwell patient at the Jonah meeting this morning? The, the one identified as the same as yesterday. I know, I appreciate that, but looking at it from my point of view, we've got potentially five males and three, male, three females requiring admission this afternoon. I've got no beds whatsoever. Under Section 136, you don't have any rights of appeal. I wanted to discuss transferring somebody into that bed so to create vacancy for this patient. Throughout the day, more patients are referred from GPs, hospitals, and A&E departments. All must be found beds. Yep, another one just came in. This patient was brought in under Section 136. Not only does the trust have no beds, but none are available in the whole of London. No patient is well enough to be discharged, 
or moved on to a halfway recovery house. The trust has no choice but to pay for private sector beds, which could cost up to a thousand pounds per day each. I'm just ringing to find out whether you got any female vacancies. The September surge. <laughs> It is, yeah. It happens most Septembers. Because, of course, you've then got all the people in the summer holidays. It tends to die down a bit. But on September, you get a massive uplift. We've got about 12, 13 of requests for a bed today. That's, you know, that's getting on for three quarters of a ward for one day. I'm telling you, things are absolutely dying at the moment. Trent Ward has 21 beds for patients with serious mental health problems. The aim is to get patients well enough to leave the ward as fast as possible. The average stay is three to four weeks. We treat many more people out in community settings. Those people who now come in as an inpatient tend to be uh, much more severely and acutely unwell. Mel has been on the wards for nine months. She has a personality disorder and a history of drug abuse and suicide attempts. Mm -hmm. Staff want to transfer Mel to a specialist personality disorder unit, but funding has been refused. We can't understand what, why, what the reason is for, you know, declining funding. Apart from the obvious financial restraints everybody's operating under at the moment. What's the meeting? Is the professionals mean? What does that mean? They're going to they're gonna discuss what, what happens to me next. And what are the choices? Either go to PD unit, a personality disorder unit, or um, be discharged. I do want to go back in the community again, start trying to start again. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to sit, sit back in the community again. Because I've been in for so long, it's going to be hard for me to settle back in. Are you worried that... What are you worried about? I was worried that I'm not going to be able to cope on my own out there. Ward is not a suitable place for her for a long term. So she has to be moved out. She has to be moved out either in the community or in the locked rehab. What's the next step? Because, of course, we have to bear in mind that she's been on our top delays list now for quite a while. So, from a clinical point of view, she doesn't require an inpatient mental health facility. She should not be on this ward. She needs to be elsewhere. Now, the clinicians are saying that they think that um, this rehab facility is best placed. The commissioners are not agreeing to it. In the meantime, if she doesn't need to be here, can she go home? You know, it's looking at the risk to herself, risk to others, but mainly the long-term view is that she's going to continue with this behaviour. The September surge is keeping the hospital at code black. Jonathan is on the morning bed conference trying to identify patients to be moved. I have very ill patients. Um, sometimes it might look quiet, it might look nice, um, and suddenly there will be an explosion and we have to run out. So the job is unpredictable. It depends on how the ward is, because the patients are more priority than any other thing. It's not like fixing a broken leg, delivering a newborn baby, a hip replacement where people skip out the door and give you boxes of chocolate. It's far more complex. You're working with people who have had multiple abuses, neglect in childhood. You don't need to be shouting. I don't wait that long. I'll be no, 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 calm, 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 calm. I don't care. I don't care. Just get that head in for me. I don't care. Don't record me. You are screaming. Can we move? Can we move outside? Okay, so we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
Yep. Do you have any nominations for private? Not at the moment. Um, the world is quite disturbed, and um, I don't think any of our patients will really be fit for private at the moment. Okay. Out of all those disturbed people, Jonathan, who's, who's your most settled patient? Ben has been brought to the 136 suite by police after threatening to commit suicide. I don't want him to jump in front of the suit train. Now who did you tell that to? One of the station staff. Ben is already living in one of the trust's recovery houses, but he wants to be admitted to the hospital. The ward, it's got, it gives you a certainty sometimes, I think. It, it gives you certainty. Right? How, how would you describe your mood of the last few days? Um, it's low, it's low, because I don't do that. Staff need to decide if his suicidal tendencies mean they should find him a bed. Yeah. Okay. All right, so how are we going to keep you safe now? They decide to send him back to the recovery house with increased levels of supervision. I think the risk is there. This is the second time he's gone to the station, but he's, he's clearly seeking help. Mm -hmm. he, he, he knew that he was at the station. He didn't want to jump in front of the train and create a, a scene mm -hmm. uh, and make other people go through a difficult situation. He, uh, and he's saying he doesn't want to end his life. He wants help. The CRHT, or Home Treatment Team, provide one-to-one -one support in the community and try to stop patients having to be admitted to hospital. We've got people with depression, bipolar affective disorder, acute anxiety, paranoia, schizophrenia, suicidal patients, patients with self-harm. The most important part of the home treatment team and what we do is actually keeping people at home. Not only does that have a, a, a reflection on beds and, and what happens there, but I think it's important that people should be treated in their home. It increases their recovery. I just want to get some water on the way out. The next day, Kelly and Charlotte are on their way to see Ben. He hears voices and they increase quite quickly when he's feeling stressed or anxious, and the voices tend to tell him that he should kill himself. Nice and tidy. You're not having any thoughts today of what happened yesterday. We're going to the train station. No, you're not no. having any thoughts to harm yourself or anything like that at the no, moment. No, I don't. Okay. And your medication, you're not having any problems with it. There's no side effects or anything. You're just forgetting. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. Forget. Just All right. So it'd be helpful if we gave it to you, just yes, for now. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, my love. You take care. We'll see you tonight. The increased demand for mental health services and the premium on beds means that more and more very ill people have to be looked after in the community. At one stage the caseload was 80, I think it's between 80 and 90 at one point and it is just completely unmanageable because one person will be going out and seeing anywhere between 9 and 11 people in one shift. and. You, you can't do it. You're basically going in, checking they're okay, giving them medication and leaving again. You just, you don't have the opportunity to sit and have some sort of therapeutic intervention with them. In case Mel doesn't get the funding for her treatment, doctors are preparing for a return to the community by letting her out of the ward three times a day. In the meantime, Mel's mother has come in to find out if her daughter will be discharged into the community or get the specialist treatment she and the doctors feel she needs. She's been institutionalised in the mental health units for a long, long while now. And I thought when they brought up the thing with the PD unit, this has been uh, her journey to get back into the community again. Yeah. 
the idea is to get to the root of the problem yeah. that's been a lot of years what she's had. And a lot also depends and on... And she's never had this before, to get actually to the root of the problem. Okay. So I, I, I have no choice to go or not. I have no choice at all in this. I, I, I'm not saying this then. The PD unit is the same as Trent Ward. I mean, I will put it that way because it's a locked door. Trent Ward oh, is a locked door. I've been in for 10 months. I'd like to be in anywhere else to get home to go to the community. Let's wait until they fund it, whether they approve the funding or whether they will decline it. One of the big concerns now is that if you go back into the community again, oh, no. it will, as your mother said, it will be a return, a cycle, and you will end up like this for a lot of your adult life. Stuart has been in and out of hospital all his life. He suffers from paranoid schizophrenia. A lot of madness here. <laughs> At times it's relatively sane. <laughs> I used to have a deep dislike of the concept of normality because of my experiences at the hand of, hands of medical model psychiatry. It's been a very painful journey for me to recognize <coughs> desirability of being sane. With cuts to support services in the community, patients like Stuart find themselves more often in the hospital. Most of the patients here do suffer from psychotic illnesses, so they've got a vulnerability then to, I suppose, flip into a sort of um, a state that's hard to understand. You start wondering, well, are we just sort of depository for people that no one else wants to deal with? Um, you know, and is it a kind of form of social control? You're tormented a lot of the time that I've known you, really. Um, and, but also fiercely independent and Thank always you have been. Well, you know, but the struggle we've got is, you know, the, that actually the issue is over the last couple of years, you have not coped for more than a couple of months at a time at home. But when you're at home on your own, you become, you know, you dangerously neglect yourself. I mean, on a number of occasions now, had you not been admitted to hospital against your will, you wouldn't be here talking to me now. It's my association with satanic cult from the past. It's still impinged on my interior life. Mm. It's very difficult to cope with. Anna is part of a team that tries to sort out support for patients when they leave hospital. They have some housing support ready for them at the right time, uh, that they have um, the right level of social care support ready for them when they go out, that their GP and everyone else is lined up to accept them and move them onwards in their pathway. And sometimes with some of the cuts that we have seen, um, some of these things begin to be quite difficult. Shall see you later. She also has to deal with people who aren't entitled to social benefits or health care. Today she's on her way to see Augustus an illegal immigrant who had a psychotic breakdown, suffering paranoid delusions and hallucinations. People believe if they come to the psychiatric hospital, you'll get everything, because there is this, expect this real well-known saying that we do not discharge anybody to the street. And because we don't discharge anybody to the street, the energy has to foot the bill. He has been receiving emergency treatment for the last three months, but is now well enough to go home. It's cheaper for the trust to buy him a ticket back to Nigeria than keep him in a recovery house. And it frees up a bed. I might be given a resettlement fund. If not, it's better I stay over here and get treated. The only help we can offer you today as an NHS trust you know, because you're here with us, is to basically help you get the tickets and to send you to Nigeria. But you don't need money to go to the doctor there because we're going to give you three injections, which will last for a bit of time. And they will give you time to see how you are back home. So returning back, how, how possible it is returning back in case the case wasn't and it was? 
What you mean? In case my situation will get worse than that, it Where? can be taken care of back home. You're not entitled to treatment in this country. Yeah, unless you're paying privately. Everything has to be paid privately. What you're getting now in here is what is called emergency treatment. It's just dire, absolutely dire at the moment. We have so many requests coming in for beds from the crisis teams. We're already full. We've already got patients in the private sector. We've got very little movement at all from within the inpatient service. So it's trying to manage the risk of keeping patients within the community whilst trying to get those who are more seriously at risk back into a hospital bed. It's the fourth week of the September surge and the bed managers and home crisis teams are battling over how to manage patients. So there's no way, even with intensive CRHT, that this patient can be supported? Um, we thought we could try and contain her at home, but she was seen by the doctor yesterday, and he was of the view that she still required admission. The other one is a psychotic um, young man uh, living with his mum. He is threatened. He has some homicidal thoughts, and he's holding a knife. Uh, so mum doesn't want him at home. She does. She cannot support him at home. And how are the CRHT managing the situation at the moment? How many times a day is he being seen? We need to be using the CRHT in the true sense of using the CRHT. I'm absolutely clear that they require the bed. We want to know what the plan is, and we also want to know what sort of level of support you put in before you're asking for a bed. We can't keep on referring to the fact that we're waiting for a bed because the private sector has minimal availability and in the trust we have no availability. We are going to unknown territory where the private sector is becoming full. And when the private sector is full, then um, we really do have to consider all these different options to how we can safely manage people. Back on Trent Ward, it looks as if Mel might be on track to get to the root of her problem. She's been told she's got the funding for the personality disorder unit. It's not going to be a short-term placement. So you could be looking at three, six months, nine months. I, I, I wouldn't want to put a figure on it. Hi, Mel, I've got some good news. They said yes to the funding. That's good. Are you happy, yeah? I didn't want to go, but I'm going to give it a shot, you know? I've got nothing to lose, have I? I haven't got nothing to lose if I just give it a shot. Really. And if everyone's saying that I need to go, then they can't be wrong, can they? If everyone's saying that I need to, and I'm just, just trying to fight it all the time, it's not good. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm not going to do anything to jeopardise it. Who's not? I'll go out, come back. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love you too. Bye. <laughs> yeah, she's alright, yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling okay. Bit, bit mixed up, but yeah. What's the mix up? Because I always said that if I got the funding that I'll give it a shot, and now I have, it's quite... It's a big thing. Mm, yeah. In Enfield, it's time for Augustus to return home to Lagos. He suffered from paranoid delusions and hearing voices. Doctors are sending him home with enough medicine to stave off his symptoms for six weeks. I'll give you the ticket and the bit of money that the trust gave, that's all. It's not much, but that's what it is. They only gave me 40 pounds for you. It's not gonna be enough. The thing was 20, 30, 40 pounds. Okay, that's just for your. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you very much. When you get there, what do you do with the injection? You go to the local clinic for them to give it to you. All these are extra costs. They are all extra costs. Why do they charge you to give an injection? Of course. Why? There's how no hospital. Do... There's no hospital. I've told you how people die here and there. You think I'm joking? 
He must be financially buoyant. He must be. He must have the capital to go to the hospital. Still feeling anxious. Can I just clarify that he's identified the least unwell patient? Nicholas, uh, not at all. Adioba, no. Uh, Daniel, no. All about capacity. Beds, 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 beds. Mel didn't return from her latest leave. Instead, she called Jonathan. Her main purpose of calling me was to say goodbye. And that was quite difficult to take. But we, I tried my best and spoke to her and I finally she said, okay, she would not uh, talk to me any longer and bang the phone on me. So we called the police. Fortunately, the police found her and brought her back to the ward. See, so you went out and you did drinking drugs. Yeah. And then what happened? And then I found myself on the roof. I was contemplating with the roof to jump on it. It just seems that everyone is a PD unit and that I don't seem to want it. Everyone is rooting for me to do it. But I just don't, I'm, I'm having second thoughts, you know? And I'm not sure if I'm ready to, to talk about things from the past, you know? And I think if I go there and, and open up, it might affect me a bit badly. What do you fear from me? If we fail, she would be a revolving door patient. And I only hope that that does not um, find a result in her in her life. I'm hoping so. I'm sorry. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a difficult a question. Loss, yeah? That's a difficult question. <laughs> I don't really like these questions. No, okay. uh, especially, it's a, it's a you, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to think of your patient what the bad end would be, would you? No. You have to not think about that. No, I I really do hate it. I just may feel comfortable, but. Personally, I feel that um, we as nurses, our best hope is to give people hope. We need more investment. Mental health is not like some of the other services in the health system. Uh, we're really having to do very complex management. Where we have concerns about risk and protection, often trying to stop someone from um, harming themselves, actually, far more than harming anybody else. If we carry on just trying to meet the demand and other services are diminishing, then yes, life is going to be really tough.